Greetings fellow gamers, it is I, the dwarf of Swedish origin. We are doing something magical today. We are redoing my old tier list. Garden Warfare 2 just went on sale for two whole dollars, which means it's time to redo the tier list. There's a lot of new players that don't know what they're doing. And of course me, who's been playing since 2017 and is the best at this game. That was awful. I want to redo my tier list and I rewatched it and it was awful. Um, there, I didn't explain my points very well, and you can tell that I really just wanted to get it out. Um, this is not a short video, very little editing. Um, I'm going to have, you know, music in the background, but I'm going to go in depth on every character and why I feel they are where they go. I need to say some stuff right off the bat. This is a console tier list. If you play on PC, may God have mercy on your soul as mine. Certain characters are going to be way higher on PC than they are on console, like Law P. On PC, Law P is disgusting on console. He's still very, very good, but you can't use an auto clicker and all, all the stuff. So uh, this is, of course, my opinion. What I think about every character is different than what you might think about every character. I've been playing since 2017. I have over a thousand hours in this game if you pool together all the the consoles and PCs and alt accounts and all the stuff. I have the stats page open on my second monitor so I can actually look at damage numbers, DPS, all the stuff. Let me describe what the tiers mean. S plus tier. These characters are literally broken. They are too good. And if you play them, I hate you, but I also play them. So I hate myself. This tier is reserved for the absolute best of the best. No weaknesses, strong in every single scenario. S tier. Very, very strong characters, maybe weak in one or two areas, but you can't go wrong picking them. So they're not absolutely broken, but they are still very good. A tier is for just good characters. They have good abilities, good damage. They might have some weaknesses, but they can do well in most situations. B tier is for decent characters. Not great, but definitely not bad. C tier is for characters that I feel are weak. You could probably still get stuff done with them, but they might have quite a few weaknesses or are just not that good in general. And D tier is for actual bad characters that you will struggle with in most scenarios. You can still get stuff done with them. I don't think there's a flat out bad character in this game, but except for one, but uh, we'll get to that. But D tier is as low as you can get in the good kind of thing. So without further ado, let's start this absolute monster of a video. Baseball star. Baseball Star's gimmick, very high DPS, uh, overheats very, very soon, um, fall off is awful, as with most All-Stars. Um, if you get close to a Baseball Star, you're dead. That's just how, you're dead. With Imp Punt, Sprint Tackle, and his primary attack being very good, his projectiles move very fast, you're dead. He's basically a discount Hockey Star. I don't think he's as good as Hockey Star, but he's very similar gameplay wise. I'm going to put him in A tier. I don't think any of the all stars are really bad, um, but he's to me nothing special. He could go in either B or A, but I'm going to put him in A tier. Cricket Star is normal all star with slower projectile speed and fire damage. And much less damage. If I'm looking at his DPS. Cricket Star's DPS is 66 and regular All-Stars is 81. It is a big difference. And fire damage doesn't really make up for that. On top of his very slow projectile, you can't really fight people at range. Which, in my opinion... That's where fire characters are best is at range because their actual damage numbers are low. So the fire damage at range is very good. That's why I think of barbecue corn as a kind of a, a longer range uh, corn, more so than pops corn. Um, he still has the broken abilities, so that kind of keeps him out of the C tier. But um, his primary leaves a lot to be desired. And it to me, it just doesn't feel very good to play him with a slush of slow projectile speed. Probably my least favorite all-star. Um, but still, no all-star is bad with those abilities. Regular all-star. Some people say he is the best all-star. Um, 
I agree. I know he's the best all-star. My, I think tennis is a close second. I think tennis is extremely underrated, but regular all-star is definitely the best all-star. Um, I don't think any all-star is S plus tier. And I think just reg all-star and tennis star are S tier. Um, I'm going to put te uh, tennis star right behind him. Uh, regular all-star really good damage. 81 DPS that this is without the damage upgrade. Um, Tennis Star's gimmick, he does do less damage. He does 68. So the same DPS as Hockey Star and Golf Star. And his gimmick is that he moves very fast while firing. And outside of firing, he also moves way faster than the rest of the All-Stars besides one. But while you're firing, you move at like double the speed. It's crazy. And is very good for dodging fire, which All-Stars... They're very similar to the heavy from TF2. Once you start firing, you are a sitting duck and you have to kill the enemy before they kill you because you're a sitting target. Tennis Star alleviates that weakness, kind of. He's still a more stationary target, but he can move much, much faster. And I think the lower DPS kind of evens out because you're going to last longer in fights because of the movement, if you use the movement, but you're also doing a bit less damage. Not huge less damage, just a little bit. So in my opinion, he's the second best all-star. Um, definitely give him a shot. I think he's very underrated. Goalie star. Um, this guy is also considered one of the best all-stars, and I think that's just because Wolfie Plays said he's the best all-star. Um, out of all of the all-stars, I believe he has the lowest DPS. And that is actually true. Goalie star has the lowest DPS. He does 51 damage per second. And Moto X Star does 52. That's insane. So Moto X Star has higher DPS. But Goalie Star has f the freezing ability, which is very good with the implant and sprint tackle. So if you are playing Goalie Star and you go up against a, uh, a Torchwood, you're dead. There's nothing you can do. Y he is going to murder you. Even if you do freeze him, you don't have the DPS to kill him in time. Um, if you ability spam, you might live. So bulkier targets like Citrons and Torchwoods and Chompers are going to give you a lot of issues. But lower health targets like Pea Shooters, Sunflowers, Cacti, Roses, all that, they are prime targets. Once you freeze them, you just throw the implant their way and they die. It's just it's as simple as that. So he is probably the best all-star when dealing with low health targets. But when it comes to anything above 150 health, he is mediocre. Um, so I think that kind of evens him out into the A tier. I don't think he's as bad as Cricket Star. I think he's a little bit better than Baseball Star. Um, but they're pretty they're pretty even to me. Um, Golf Star. Another one that there was a YouTuber, rest in peace, Chump Sizzle. I loved him. He said that Golf Star was the best All Star, and he made a video going in depth on it, and that really showed me how good Golf Star is. He's the best golf, best Golf Star. He's the best All Star at range by far. He has very good DPS at 68, which is the same as Tennis Star. Um, and his fall off starts way f fall off starts at 20 meters, which is pretty good for All Stars. He's supposed to be like the ranged all-star. So he has lower DPS up close, but at further distances, he has much higher DPS. So it kind of, that mid range is where you want to play. You want to play around that 20 meters, 15 meters range. In those scenarios, he is a monster. Very good. And if you get close to golf star, he has abilities to murder you. Um... I do think he is the third best all-star. Do I think he's an S tier though? I don't think he is. Um, I don't think any all-star can be S plus because of their mobility. They kind of get shafted in that regard. Um, I think he's probably top of A tier. As we add in more classes, this will look a bit better. This is how I feel, I think. These are the only two All-Stars that can be an S tier. Hockey Star. 
Very good all-star up close. If you get out of colonoscopy range of Hockey Star, he's a free kill. Um, he's only good at close range, but when... And I mean very close range. But once you are you get to that close range, everything dies. You have such high DPS. It's, it's insane. And... Um, the problem with him is getting that close. All-stars are all very effective when you get close up. That's every class. But all-stars especially, very much close ranged characters. But Hockey Star takes that to an extreme. His spread is awful. If you're firing at somebody across Coliseum, for example, you're probably going to hit like two bullets. If you're hitting somebody at like 20 meters, probably like a quarter of your bullets are going to hit. It's, it's, it's bad. Um, so it's kind of a goalie star situation where he's extremely good, better than stock all-star in this specific scenario, but every other scenario he sucks. So I'm probably going to put him above baseball star. Baseball star has the same issue, but not to the extreme of hockey star. So he's probably the same. And what I consider goalie stars freeze better than hockey stars massive damage up close probably it's more versatile mm, i don't know these two are very close to me these three honestly moto x star uh some people consider him the worst all-star um i would agree to an extent i see why people say this because his dps is so low 52 is the second lowest besides a uh, goalie star who is 51 so I get it. And his gimmick of taking away plants' abilities with his dirt, uh, it's not very good. It's kind of glitchy. Sometimes it doesn't even work. Um, he probably is the worst all-star. Um, but it's very close with Wrestling Star. Wrestling Star has the same kind of thing as Hockey Star, where if you get close to Wrestling Star, he hits like a truck. Problem is, <laughs> he shoots so slowly, it's kind of hard to... It feels much different than the rest of the All-Stars, who shoot very fast and automatic. This guy does shoot automatic, but it's like slow. So it's kind of hard to hit your shots. And the shots hit, the fall off is so bad. You'll be, you'll, it's like throwing peanuts at people if you're shooting anywhere beyond like 10 meters. The damage goes down to like eight, and when you shoot this slow, it, it it's awful. Moto X and uh, Wrestling Star are very interchangeable for me. Me personally, I think Wrestling Star is a bit better. I like the slow firing speed. Uh, I'm a masochist, I guess. Um, so speaking of low firing speed, Rugby Star, I love Rugby Star. Actually, the only two All Stars I play are Tennis Star and Rugby Star. The difference is that Tennis Star is actually a good all-star. Rugby Star is not. Um, I wouldn't say, again, his abilities keep him out of C tier. But he's definitely down with these three. I think he's better than those two by a little bit. But not not by too, too much. We're moving on to the corns. We'll start with Barbecue Corn. Barbecue Corn, if you weren't around when the game first came out, it was a long time ago. Some of you probably weren't even born yet. But... Barbecue corn was the best corn. And to see him falling down from grace so bad, it it hurts. I don't think he's the worst corn, though. I think he's the second worst corn. You have to play him in a sp very specific way. If you play barbecue corn as a ranged character, you'll be doing you'll be doing golden. Mid-range to long range. He, he kills. Um close range though, and if anything gets close to you, you will die. <laughs> um and the corn doesn't have two broken abilities. He only has one, which I don't feel is enough to get you into B tier. Like all star, no all star is C tier because they have the broken abilities. Corn doesn't have that luxury. Um, barbecue corn, probably top of C tier. Definitely not the worst character. But if you go from playing regular corn to barbecue corn, you're gonna be, you're gonna tell, you're gonna struggle. Um, but he is very fun still give him a shot commando corn's weird i don't i feel like nobody knows where to place him because he's so erratic his damage isn't the best 
um, out of all the corns, he has 63 DPS, which is mid. It is literally middle of the pack for corns. Um, but he's a legendary character. He gets access to a legendary meter. This legendary meter gives him damage resistance, a speed boost, and 60 ammo. No damage increase like the rest of the, the legendary characters. He gets more ammo, which is very nice. It is very nice to just shoot and <laughs> forever. Um, but his main gimmick besides the legendary meter is that his his weapon fires slower than the rest of the corns, but they have splash damage. This splash damage is awful. It's not good. You will probably never get a kill because of the splash damage. His, you want to be hitting direct. Um, I do think he's a good corn. He's definitely not bad. I think he's A tier. Better than Hockey Star, but not better than Goalie Star. Um... He's just kind of, he's odd. I, I don't, again, I feel like nobody knows where to place him because he is so weird. He plays very weirdly. I do enjoy him. He is a good character. Just not on par with the rest of the legendaries. Mob Cop, I feel, is the worst porn. Uh, him and Barbecue have the same DPS. Um, But Mob Cop doesn't have the range that Barbecue Corn has. Doesn't have the fire damage. And his gimmick of shooting slower and piercing enemies is useless. Nobody has ever got a piercing kill on Mob Cop. Like, it, it just doesn't make sense. You don't want to take on groups as Mob Cop. You're already the weakest corn. Taking on more than one enemy just doesn't make sense. And if you're just firing blindly into a point, like if you're playing Turf Takeover, you're not doing anything. You're just getting damage and you might hit one collateral bullet but you're not getting value out of it i feel his gimmick is useless and his gun is just it feels bad to use i don't, I don't like him um but him and barbecue corn are pretty interchangeable you could switch him out um but i i like barbecue corn better reg corn this is one of the best characters in the game he's going top of s tier for now he hits like a truck even before the damage upgrade, after you get the damage upgrade, it is insane. The only thing that would make this character better is a legendary meter. Well, would you look at that? Party Corn is S plus tier. He is definitely the best uh, corn, like no doubt in my mind. I don't think anybody's going to argue Party Corn in S plus tier. He's an absolutely broken character. It's like a truck. Um, it's the same exact damage as regular corn. He just has a legendary meter which is very good. Um, so I don't need to dwell on him any longer. He's he's broken. And then we end on a Popscorn. Popscorn, I think, is B tier. He's supposed to be the ranged corn, and he shoots in bursts of three, I believe. Um, he has the lowest DPS out of the corns, but he has the least fall off. So you want to play him at like mid range, not far, far range. You won't, you'll won't be doing too much damage, but mid range, very, very uh, favors pops corn. Um, again, you could probably switch these three around, but I do think pops corn is kind, kind of underrated. Um, not too much, but he's he's okay. He's not bad. He's just meh. Um, bandit cactus. I have a I have a soft spot for Bandit Cactus. Um, if you're asking me, is Bandit Cactus the best character in the game? Obviously. Realistically, though, um, she's probably like low B tier, high C tier. I'm gonna go low B. Bandit Cactus is gimmick. She fires like a foot soldier. She does not have any fall off damage, and she hits very similar damage to foot soldier. Just her abilities don't really work for this play style. Soldiers have the rocket, the jump for mobility to get in and out of fights, and they have the stink cloud. For some reason, they don't really do anything. Um, Cactus doesn't have the movement speed, the abilities, really anything. You have to play Bandit Cactus like a normal cactus. She's just automatic. So you have to be more accurate with Bandit Cactus than really any other cactus. 
because you have to hit simultaneous um, bullets. Um, that being said, she can melt. If you hit all your shots, she's pretty nasty, but hitting all your shots is another story, and her gimmick conflicts with her gameplay. So uh, we're going to put her here and see how it feels. Camo Cactus. I think Camo Cactus is like the third best cactus. Uh, she can one-shot imps with the damage upgrade. So if you can hit your shots, they're dead. She hits very, very good damage. Can two-shot most classes. Um, it's a slow fire rate that you have to get used to, and you have to hit your shots. And if you if an enemy gets anywhere close to you, you just drop dead. Camo Cactus has no close range ability to fight which is most of the cacti but camo cactus especially struggles with this um so at long range i think she's probably a tier i'd say she's like right here i think for now um it's the lack of close range that really makes her struggle uh the red cactus is also right there with her i think they're very interchangeable if you like the fire the higher fire rate of red cactus. You like red cactus. If you like, yeah. They're pretty similar. Um, but different. <laughs> Electric cactus. Electric cactus is kind of weird. She hits probably the least damage per bullet, but has a higher fire rate than every other cactus besides bandit cactus. Um, so quite honestly, you can play electric cactus like a close ranged cactus like bandit cactus except i feel electric cactus is a bit better at range and her gimmick is kind of useful on like turf and suburbanation but um the electric damage doesn't really come into play often because you're a ranged character and yeah so i'll probably put her mm, we're gonna put her here and i'm actually gonna move bandit cactus up above wrestling star and popcorn as well fire cactus used to be my favorite cactus um uh she's probably the worst cactus besides jade cactus um she has very low damage as as fun as she is and as much as i love her i have to admit to myself that she's just not that good and hits very low damage and yeah that, that, that's really it's a cactus with fire damage and hits like a wet noodle like i don't know what you want me to say she's not bad but not not great future cactus though oh future cactus destroys future cactus is what camel cactus wants to be camel cactus future cactus can hit like 90 something damage per shot if you charge a shot and then you just hit like one or two non-charge shots and anything does it she's insane but again, you get close to a cactus, they die instantly. So I don't think you can be S tier and have such a large weakness. You have to be good in every scenario, weaker in some, but not bad in any. And cacti are flat out bad up close. Ice cactus is kind of weird. You don't get to use the ice gimmick much because by the time you fire, I think it takes four shots to free somebody with the ice upgrade um they could be out of your sight line um you could miss um and i find me personally when i'm sniping at people and predicting shots it's harder to predict shots you hit one shot and they slow down a bit you hit the second shot and they slow down even more and then i can't adjust to the slow it messes up my muscle memory because i'm slowing them down and i guess i just don't expect them to slow down i don't play ice cactus very much because of this so i guess that's just a skill issue for me i think she's probably on the same tier as electric cactus just opposite play styles long range close range kind of thing jade cactus is the worst cactus uh she hits even less damage than fire cactus she is hitting She's hitting 59 and Fire Cactus is hitting 55. Um, actually, no, Jade Cactus. Jade Cactus has higher DPS than Fire Cactus. If you're taking into account the splash damage. 
if you miss a bullet with Jade Cactus, it explodes. So you can aim at zombies' feet and have the projectiles explode and do damage. But why would you do that when you can just aim at their head and kill them faster? And if you hit them faster, or if you hit them in the head, they die faster. So why would you want to miss your shots intentionally? And if you're doing it unintentionally, why would you want to be rewarded for that? She does have 25 more health and moves slower. Which makes her, I think, the slowest character in the game. I think she's slower than Armor Chomper. If I'm remembering correctly. It doesn't particularly matter. Because she's a cactus, but that's a weakness you have is your mobility. When you're already that weak at close range, making yourself slower is not worth the 25 health. I have never won a fight because of the 25 health. And I think it's probably going to stay that way. I think Jade Cactus is definitely worse than Motocross Star. And yeah. Uh, Zen Cactus. Probably A tier around here. Her gimmick is when you... The further you get into your clip of 5 bullets, I think it is, the more damage they do. So it starts off at 20, then goes to 30, 40, 50, 60. So the last bullet in your clip hits the same amount of damage as Camo Cactus. Now, in my mind, why would you play Zen Cactus and hit 60 once in a while when you can play Camo Cactus, have the same amount of shots in your clip, and hit 60 every bullet? Um, the only reason that, in my mind, you play Zen Cactus is because Zen Cactus can't hit headshots. It's the same damage no matter where you hit the zombie. So if you are inaccurate, then Zen Cactus is probably the cactus for you because you don't get rewarded for hitting headshots now that being said um i don't think that really pushes her above any other cactus because hit your shots <laughs> this is if you're bad zen cactus is probably your favorite cactus um or you just enjoy her gimmick which i don't blame you but uh not not very good in my opinion she's probably here I guess. She's not great. Definitely not bad. She can hit 60, but only once in her clip. And for the first shot, your act or first two shots actually, you're doing less damage than regular cactus. So I don't know why you would want to play Zen Cactus over any of these cactuses. Besides maybe ice. Petrified cactus. Egg. Egg is probably right here. Her gimmick is that she has self-detonation, which you will notice on this tier list that self-detonation is broken. She also has 50, 150 health like Jade Cactus, but isn't slowed down to the same extent as Jade Cactus, and her bullets hit like a train. This is a close-ranged cactus. You cannot play her like Camo Cactus or Future Cactus. You have to play mid to close range. And in that area, she is very good. The only thing holding her back is her abilities. Her abilities are useless because you're playing mid to close range. Unless you get a lucky potato mine, your abilities aren't helping you because you're a long ranged class. So it kind of clashes with Petrified Cactus's gameplay. Um, yeah, I think this is a good spot for her now. For now. Chompers, get ready for a lot of down here. Twilight Chomper is the best Chomper. I don't think anybody's arguing that. Has the best DPS with her bite, or his bite, sorry. Fastest movement speed besides Hot Rod Chomper. Um, has the Twilight Warp, which is better than Burrow, in my opinion. I think the best Chomper is B tier. Uh, probably here. Um, and now that I'm actually looking at this, I'm going to move uh, Jade Cactus down one. Twilight well, Chomper is good. Um, no Chomper is A tier. Their gimmick is not very good. You have to play them like a stealth character. Or you're not going to get very far. And if you suicide Burrow, like, what's even the point? Regular Chomper. I'm going to put in C tier. Consistent. You can't go wrong with Reg Chomper. Um, nothing's holding him back. But nothing's pushing him forward. I am going to say that these corns are better than Reg Chomper, though. Maybe... 
I'd put him higher than Mop Cop. I'd be more scared if a Chomper is right on me than if a Mob Cop is right on me, because both these characters are, right, are close range. Now, Disco Chomper. Disco Chomper is regular Chomper, but he hits less damage with his bites, but he has a legendary meter. But you have to swallow five zombies to get the legendary meter. Not kill five zombies, swallow five zombies. Which makes this legendary meter the hardest to get out of any legendary character. On a chomper that does less damage than reg chomper. I see no point in playing disco chomper over reg chomper. You're not going to swallow five people unless you're a god at chomper. And if you are a god at chomper, I, I fear you with my life. Fire chomper. I think all the spray chompers are um, worse than bite chompers. They just do less damage and even with trigger mashing, it doesn't feel great. Um, out of all the spray chompers, I'll get all the spray chompers out of the way. The order goes fire, toxic, electric. Electric chomper hits the least amount of damage tied with another, tied with another, and his electric damage only does two, two chain damage. If you're taking on more than one person at a time as Chomper, you're dying. And that two damage is not going to save you. Now, people get a uh, placebo with Electric Chomper because he hits 10 damage per tick. And the others hit like 8. So people think Electric Chomper does more damage. This is not the case. Electric Chomper. Hits 75 max DPS. Which, besides Armor Chomper. Is the... Uh, he had 75 DPS, which is the lowest, and this is with trigger mashing, which is the lowest uh, damage tied with Chomp Thing of the Spray Chompers. But I'm saving Chomp Thing for last. Because I want to go in depth on Chomp Thing. And Toxic Chomper, his gimmick actively harms him. Um, if you get close to a zombie, they'll start taking Toxic damage. But you have to play Chompers in a stealthy way. So you don't want them to know you're there until they're being eaten. So this warns zombies that you're there. So arguably he is the worst chomper. I accept the argument of toxic, electric, or chomp thing being the worst. But it's kind of a it's kind of obvious what I think. Hot rod. I'd say hot rod is probably top of C tier. Uh, hits 25 per bite instead of 35, but he has the fastest movement speed in the game uh, with both speed upgrades. Without both speed upgrades, Twilight Chomper is faster. So Hot Rod hits less damage than Twilight and is slower than Twilight. Well, what does Hot Rod have going for him? When he swallows a zombie, he gets a speed boost. Okay. <laughs> what a useless thing. If you swallow somebody successfully, odds are you're already in a situation where you get to live. And if you swallow somebody and die, you're dead. So the upside of getting a speed boost after you swallow somebody isn't really good. The only reason Hot Rod is this high is because of his mobility and as a stealth character, you need as much mobility as you can. And then Armor Chomper. I don't think Armor Chomper is as bad as everybody says. Maybe it's food you're getting to me. I don't know. Um, but I feel he can two-shot imps and scientists. That's all. That should be enough to get him out of D tier at least. His movement speed is a big downside. So I would probably put him. I would rather play Armor Chomper than Disco Chomper, but not more than Reg Chomper. Um, he has very high health, but moves extremely slowly. Second slowest character in the game behind Jade Cactus, which is down here with him. Unicorn Chomper, I don't have. Uh, so it's hard for me to rank Unicorn Chomper, but to me, he is the same as Hot Rod power wise. And it's a choice between Twilight or Unicorn. Do you like faster movement speed and a one big warp that takes you half across the map? Or do you like two little warps? Me personally, I like two warps better, but the movement speed is more impactful and Twilight hits more damage per bite than Unicorn. So Unicorn is on the same level as Hot Rod to me. They're both kind of same. Uh, Count Chompula. 
in theory, Count Chompula's gimmick is better than Hot Rod's. When you swallow somebody, you get health back. Great. The problem is, if you swallow somebody, nine times out of ten, you're not surviving. You have to... It's a very specific scenario where you actually benefit from this. Um, and it's not going to happen often. So most of the time, you're just a chomper that hits less damage than Reg Chomper, has 25 less damage, has 25 less health than Reg Chomper for an upside that barely comes into account. If the health on kill was when you first bite, like when you swallow right away and you start chewing, way better, but it's after you swallow the zombie, so not very good. Uh, Yeti Chomper, very hard one to do. Actually, I don't have to have my, I don't have to have my headphones on. What am I doing? Yeti Chomper. I think Yeti Chomper is a weird chomper to rank. He's technically ranged, but hits like a wet noodle anywhere out of close range. Close range, he hits very good um, damage, but his projectiles are very slow. They're hard to hit outside of immediate close range, and even then, it still kind of messes with you because you're not used to it. You have to play a lot of Yeti Chomper to get used to his projectile and to use it right. If you master Yeti Chomper, which I've never seen anybody do, he's probably up here somewhere, but... I do think nobody's going to put that amount of time into Yeti Chomper. And even him being able to hit out of his effective range, eh, it's not very good. I'd rather play Armor Chomper than Yeti Chomper. Citrons. This is where people are going to get mad at me if they aren't already. Regular Citron, I think, is um, probably top of A tier. The problem with Citrons is that they're not good outside of very close range. And that's more apparent with other Citrons that don't have splash damage. Normal Citron has the beam damage and then splash damage on top of it. When you hit a zombie, you'll close range, you'll see 10, 10, 10, 10, and little twos everywhere. The little twos is the splash damage. This is the only Citron besides Party Citron that has this upside. And I do think it's very good. It adds a lot of damage. And I'm going to put Party Citron right up here. Um, probably, yeah, above... Actually, I think Party Citron's S tier. Same damage as Reg Citron, but has a Legendary mode. What could go wrong? Very powerful Legendary mode. Um, Electric Citron. This character is all over the place. Some people think he's up here. Other people think he's down here. What do I think? Meh. He's probably around here somewhere. His projectiles do very good damage, especially if you charge a shot. I think you can one-shot imps. Now, that's at very, very close range, but I think you can do it. Um, let me see if it says anywhere. Uh, did it does not say. Yeah, so uh, a fully charged shot does 50 damage. So that and one shot from your regular will kill an imp. So very, very strong if you charge a shot. I would probably rather face a hockey star than an e citron, but not a bandit cactus. Um, e citron's not. I don't feel is extremely good. If you're trying to play a range chomper, chomper, a range citron, he's good. But why would you do that? Why? Who hurt? Um, Ice Citron. A very weird Citron. H hits the same damage as Reg, if I'm not mistaken, but doesn't have the splash damage, or hits like one or two less than Reg. Um, I think he, he is strong. Very strong once you get the Ice Upgrade. A Mech Destroyer. Um, but doesn't hit extremely good damage. I'd say him and Electric Citron are very close in power level. Just Electric Citron is better with burst damage and Ice Citron is better with consistent damage. Iron Citron. Um, people are probably going to be mad, but I think Party Citron is better than Iron Citron. Let me explain. Try to at least. Iron Citron's weapon works in a very weird way where he shoots one shot and has to reload, like uh, Super Commando. Um, close range 
Iron Citron has a DPS with both. Re I'm talking with both reload upgrades. He has a DPS of 37.5. That's pitiful. That's worse. That's like way worse than Moto X Star. And outside of very close range, it's way worse. You're hitting like, if I'm remembering correctly, like 15 damage per shot. It's awful. Iron Citron outside of Iron Mode is not good. He's like B tier. Maybe even C tier. But when you're in Legendary Mode, you are S plus tier. You're abs you can take down mechs in like one clip if you're close range. So his good mobility and very, very tanky health pool. Highest health pool in the game besides Mr. Barbecue Tree Man. But outside of legendary mode, not good. Not good. So that I, in my opinion, that kind of bumps him down to here or here. I'm going to put him in S so I don't get yelled at. <laughs> um, but realistically, he's probably top of A or bottom of S. Toxic Citron. In my last tier list, I had him down here, which I think is a crime against humanity. Toxic Citron is like C tier. I think he's just a worse barbecue corn. To me, it's like he's not good at close range. And his fall off compared to other Citrons is not bad because you have cloud damage. So you have to play him like a ranged Citron. But a ranged Citron is bad. So what do you what do you do with this character? It's the same kind of thing with uh, Barbecue Corn. So to me, they're kind of very similar, but Toxic Citron definitely worse. I could see an argument being made for like here or here, but because he can shoot at a range, I'm going to put him above Rage Strong. Engineers. Oh my gosh, we have so much. I have to speed this up. AC Perry. AC Perry is like C tier. His freezing is very slow. His projectiles are very slow. He's just a slow character. Um, he's, he's just, his DPS is very low and none of his abilities really synergize with ice effect and it, he's just underwhelming, I guess. Um, but engineers automatically to me cannot be lower than top of c tier because they have the ability to make teleporters which can save games and it, it's a big deal and his abilities aren't bad um e tier is really reserved for like just chompers so to me ac perry is the worst engineer but not not a bad bad character not not awful Reg Engineer, I think, is like mid B tier. Um, hits really good damage. Uh, the only thing I don't care for about Reg Engineer is his range is capped. After you shoot a bullet, if it doesn't reach a target by a certain distance, it explodes. Now, you can actually use this to your advantage. I've killed people around corners that I don't have line of sight on with this. Because they're at the perfect range where I can make the projectile explode on them. This is a very, very rare occurrence, but it can happen. So it can be for your benefit, but the range cap to me kind of limits him. Sanitation Expert is just regular soldier, regular soldier, regular engineer without the range cap. So to me, Sanitation Expert is just a better reg engineer. There's no downside. If I'm not mistaken, he doesn't have much worse DPS than reg engineer. Let's see reg engineer hits 50 dps and sanitation expert hits 56 so he has higher dps and he has uncapped range so he is literally a direct upgrade to stock there is no downside besides maybe like projectile speed landscaper landscaper is a weird engineer he's automatic but he fires slow it's kind of like an uh a wrestling star situation to me Except Landscaper hits very good damage. I'm um, probably top of B tier, bottom of A. Um, I'll put him. I'll put him above Cricket Star. Mechanic is the best engineer, and I don't really think you can change my mind on that. He is a soldier with engineer abilities, so he's a little worse than Regfoot Soldier. Um, to me, he's like. Would I rather face a mechanic? Or an Iron Citron, I'd rather face an Iron Citron. Would I rather face a Party Citron? No, <laughs> I'll I'll take the mechanic. 
So to me, Mechanic is around here. And he can make teleporters, which is insane. Painter is the sniper class, the sniper engineer. Um, which is funny because he has a very slow projectile speed. You have to lead your shots like crazy with Painter. But he does hit very good damage. Painter does 45 DPS at very long range. Which is not bad. Um, I do think he is worse than Sanitation Expert. Um, I think Sanitation Expert, quite honestly, is a better sniper because his projectile moves faster than Painter's. But Painter hits higher damage per shot at long range. So these characters are very, very close. Plumber is like here. Plumber doesn't hit very good damage. He hits, let's see, 46 DPS, which is a little higher than Painter, but he doesn't have the range. His gimmick is that he has more splash damage. Which is useful. It is useful. But I don't think it's worth the direct shot damage nerf. So he kinda he's kind of in a weird spot right here. Um Rody Z people think is the best engineer, and I strongly disagree. Um Rody Z is a better chomper. He has the lethality of a Chomper up close, and he has the mobility better than Twilight Chomper. So to me, uh, Rody Z is like around here somewhere. Do I think he's better all around than Reg Engineer? Eh -eh. Also, he's the only armored zombie. He has 150 health, while the rest of the engineers have 125, which is good, considering his playstyle is the same as a Chomper. Um, I think he's probably... Better than Sanitation Expert. Um, would I r rather fight an Ice Cactus? No. That's kind of how I'm rating this, is would I rather fight this guy or this guy? I would rather fight a Rody Z than a Goalie Star, but not a good Red Cactus. Because a Red Cactus can mess you up. So he's probably around here somewhere. I, would, I could live with you putting him a bit higher or a bit lower. Electrician is... Probably the worst engineer. He hits the lowest damage tied with Plumber, except he doesn't have the splash damage of Plumber. He has the lowest splash damage, if I'm not mistaken. And his electric arc isn't very good. It's it's there. If you spam at a at an objective, you might get a few kills, but nothing too special. To me, he's very close to Plumber. I think Electrician feels a bit better than Plumber. Because he has a very high uh, move speed projectile. So he's probably around here somewhere. Welder is also down here with these two. He actually has the lowest DPS now that I'm looking at it. At 43. Um, but he doesn't have the range cap of Reg Engineer. Which is the same as these two. But uh, I think the fire damage is decent on slow firing characters. So he's probably better than Plumber. Do I think he's better than Electrician, though? Mm, probably not. Probably not. The GOAT. I never know how to rank the GOAT. He's just a worse foot... foot uh, he's a worse foot soldier with support abilities. He's probably around here somewhere. Um, Because the, the thing about the GOAT is he's a support character. More so than Scientist. He doesn't really do that good of damage he doesn't do bad damage but he's kind of eh. and his abilities aren't very good for him his abilities are good for his teammates so eh. he does have the laser which is very good um i'd probably put him above cricket star once i place everybody on here i'm gonna move them around a bit but yeah imps imps are my favorite class i have very strong feelings about imps let's get into it reg imp um, I think he is probably the third best imp. And I think he's A tier. Um, if you ever if you've ever gone against a very good imp, it is scary. And imp, reg imp, has very high DPS. Very high DPS. Um, he has 68. Which is the same as the Scallywag mech. That's insane. Imp hits insane damage. 
His weakness, range. He cannot hit anything medium range. Like, it's his spread is awful. And his recoil is huge, so you have to fight at close range. Um, but it's not as bad as a chomper. Much higher DPS. His mobility is insane. He moves fast. Hard to kill. Hard to kill his little bastard. And projectiles, very easy to hit. I love it. But not easy to hit projectiles. Little Drake. He has the... Oh yeah, and I have to talk about mech. Uh, Reg Imp's mech. Second best mech, I think. Very good mech. Uh, little Drake. Very slow projectiles. Very low DPS. DPS is at 58. Um, very slow projectiles. And his mech, in my opinion, is the worst mech. It's just, it's, it can only hit very close range targets, which makes it kind of, eh. Um, I would probably put him, I would rather face a painter. Yeah, I'd rather face a, a sanitation expert than a little drink. Still an imp, still very good, um, but, eh, his primary kind of holds him back. Skylywag is my favorite character in the game, and... I think he is a little worse than Reg. Not, not too bad. Not, not way worse, but just a bit worse. Um, and his mech is a very fun mech, but it's not the best mech. His projectile moves pretty slow, and for a sniper mech, it's kind of eh. Uh, Party Imp is just a regular imp with a legendary mode and a better mech for some reason. Or actually, I think it doesn't last as long as the reg me mech, so, uh, but it does a little bit more damage, so pros and cons. I would rather face a... Uh, I'll put him here. I'll put Party Imp here. Yeah, I think that's I think that's fair. Maybe even here. His Legendary Meter is kind of hard to get because of your health pool. You have to be pretty good at Party Imp to get the Legendary Meter. Once you get it, you're impossible to kill because you're so small. Yeah, I'll put him at bottom of A tier, right below Iron Citrus. Pylon Imp, because of the popularity of one, wow, the voice crack, because of the popularity of one specific TVZ YouTuber, Pylon Mech's stocks have gone up way more. Um, people used to think he was the worst imp in the game, and now all of a sudden that's that's no more. Um, me personally, I think he's better than Drake, but not by much. Um, his projectile, his gun is weird to get used to. I played a lot of Pylon Imp, so I'm pretty decent with it, but... It's, it's definitely, it has a learning curve because it shoots in bursts of two. And it doesn't hit the best damage. Um, yeah, but it, he's still very good. He has one of the most fun mechs, in my opinion. It moves the fastest, and yeah, it's great. Um, I'll put Pylon Imp below the goat. Shrimp. I love Shrimp. Shrimp is like a ranged imp. He has very low recoil, decent fast shooting... Um, has not so great DPS, but still very good at 50. Um, his mech is the best mech. Like, no doubt. Absolutely kills at any range. Um, so, Shrimp, quite honestly, I think, is very close to Pylon. Um, Py Shrimp's mech is better, but Pylon's imp is better. Whichever one you value more is... Order. Uh, me personally, I like Shrimp a bit more. NZ7 is the best character in the game. Need I say more? He, his damage per clip is insane. You have such room for error. And you can shoot as fast as you can match the button. So if you have a particularly fast trigger finger, then this character absolutely shreds. Um, same with Law P, but we'll get there eventually. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. His mech is a little bit worse than Reg Imp's, in my opinion, but... His actual imp is so good, like, absolutely shreds. I have always felt Z7 is the best character in the game, and I think I will always think that. Agent P is also up here, um, if you can hit your headshots. If you can't hit your headshots, he's like, yeah. but if you can hit headshots, this guy shreds as well. Um, probably bottom or top of S tier, or bottom of S plus tier. I think the... The loss of 25 health is a big difference, so I'm probably going to put him above Reg Porn, but yeah, I think he belongs there. Commando P is my favorite P shooter. 
And he is the worst pea shooter. Sucks to say. I do think Rock P is better. Which, um, yeah, doesn't feel good to say. Commando P is probably down here. Very good abilities, so that kind of keeps him out of C tier. Um, his P's are fully automatic, and they hit like 10 per. But he doesn't fire particularly fast, and the fall off damage is awful. You have to be close range, or this guy does like no damage. Um, Rock P is like not much better. They're very interchangeable, in my opinion. Um, but Rock P does have tankiness on his side, even though he loses mobility. He's a bad character, don't get me wrong. I just don't think he's the absolute worst P shooter. I think my favorite is the worst one. Um, we're going to put him here for now, and I'll see how I feel about that in a bit. Reg P shooter. I think Reg P shooter is A tier. I think he's slept on hard. Um, I quite honestly, I think Reg P shooter is probably here. I don't think he's better than Egg. Egg is broken. Uh, actually, I'm probably gonna move Egg up a bit. But yeah, he's better than these two, and I think better than all of these. Now, th when I said at the beginning that this is a console. Uh, tier list. This is mainly because of this guy and this guy right here. EP on console is just easy mode. You don't have to try. You just spam the button and things die. Um, whereas Law P takes a lot more skill. And you can get the same kind of effect. Um, but you have to work a lot harder for it. So to me, that just makes EP on console better than Law P. And aiming on console is just harder than PC. In, in my opinion. Um, so they're very close, but EP is definitely better. I'd say Law P is like here, but still very good. Fire P, um, basically regular P, but just it's just worse. Hits way less damage. Still has the good abilities though, but it's not terrible damage. It's like meh, it's meh damage. I'd put him here. Uh, same with Frozen, quite honestly. They're very similar to me. Frozen P takes a long time to freeze. And by the time you've frozen somebody, you've probably gotten close to killing them. Unless they're like a Super Brains or a All-Star. I think you have to hit like four or five Ps directly to freeze somebody. So the freezing gimmick doesn't really come into account unless you're fighting tanky characters or mechs. And it kind of makes it even for me. But they're still P shooters, so they're still good and they hit better damage than these two so plasma p is also up here um i'm not sure where plasma p is probably the p shooter i've played the least uh but he, i know he's very very strong uh, i mean i've mastered every character twice so i played every character quite a bit um but he's probably i'd rather face a he's here i'd say he's here around here somewhere you can move him up or down a bit. I won't blame you. Toxic P, also here. Um, I don't know. He's just Reg P, but with technically damage over time. But I feel I think his splash is just a bit better than Reg P. So if you're inaccurate, then Toxic P is the P for you. Toxic P is pretty much Berry P shooter, just not as good. Not as good. The Pirates. Captain Cannon is up here. Um, where he struggles is he's a kind of a close range to mid range character, but he only has 125 health, so you have to play mid range. If things get very close to you, you're going to struggle. Um, but he's definitely up here. He's very good. His projectile velocity isn't low by any means, but it's not very fast. I would rather fight a tennis star. Yeah, I'd, I'd say he's around here somewhere. Regular Captain Deadbeard, uh, better than Cactus. Better than Pea Shooter, though, that's a bit. And I'm going to put Captain Party Man one above. Because they're very similar, I I think Captain Party Man has a little bit lower DPS. Normal Captain Deadbeard is 56, and Captain Party Man is 50. So, not a huge difference, but there is a difference. But uh, his legendary meter is very easy to get because you're a sniper. You get long kill streaks. And it's very, it's a very good legendary meter. Um, just don't go in the barrel or your, or the bird, or don't just don't use your abilities. <laughs> don't use your abilities in party mode. Um, but I think he is better than Reg 
uh, Captain Deadbeard. But that that's really just a personal taste. They're very interchangeable. Flame Face, in my opinion, is the worst pirate. He has the not the lowest DPS because um, Captain Squawk exists, but he only hits two more damage per second than Captain Squawk, who's famous for having low DPS. And in my opinion, Captain Flameface's bullets are harder to hit because they move slower than Captain Squawk. Um, Captain Flameface, I think he's better than Twilight, better than Motocross, better than Popscorn though. No, I don't think he is. Um, and Captain Squawk, I think is just a better. Okay, let me. Captain Squawk is my favorite pirate, so I'm gonna try and advocate for him. He can two-shot sunflowers. That's a big deal, especially when you're a sniper. Those kind of damage thresholds matter. So roses and sunflowers die in two shots. That's awesome. And the thing about Captain Dead or Captain Squawk is that the he can't fight at close range. His shotgun sucks. Um, but he's he's a bolt action sniper rifle. I think he's better than Captain Flameface. Do I think he's better than Bandit Cactus? Mm, nah. Uh, I love Captain Squawk, but I gotta admit, he's not the best character in the game. Captain Sharpbite is a weird character. He's worse than Red Captain, but better than Captain Squawk. But he's not good, but he's not bad. He's just... Meh. He's meh. I'll put him... Uh, I'll put him here. That seems about right to me. Now we're on to the Roses. Um, Reg Rose is probably B tier. My problem with Roses is that they're only good at mid range. You get close to a Rose, the Rose dies. If somebody's fighting you from a range, the Rose dies. If, and her abilities aren't very good. In mid range, she is very good. And the ability to make teleporters is very good considering the only game mode you can play anymore is Turf. So, it does matter. Um, but a good rose is not as good as a good I, a good pea shooter i don't think so and druid rose is just a worse normal rose very very slow projectile velocity very low dps just not a good character normal rose hits 42 dps and druid rose hits 32 that's a huge difference um so and the lower projectile speed it's just worse um just objectively there isn't really an upside to playing Druid Rose. Toxic damage doesn't matter when you're doing less damage in the first place. Uh, let's skip these two for now and move on to Party Rose. To me, Party Rose is just a better normal Rose. Um, Rose is kind of a... You don't get into dangerous fights much. You just kind of sit in the back and shoot. So you get high kill streaks. So the Legendary Meter is very easy to get. But the Legendary Meter, because you're a Rose, is very low impact. You're not going to do too much with it. But it's nice. And it has the best music, which is the best thing about her. So, in my opinion, she's very slightly better than Reg Rose, but they're very interchangeable. You can switch them up all you want. These two are down here. They don't really have anything going for them. Fire Rose is definitely worse. I'm going to put Fire Rose next to Toxic Citron. Not a good character. Um, even when you charge your shots, it's just eh. It's good against imps. But, that's it. I mean, technically every character is good against this. <laughs> Frost Rose is better than Ice Rose by quite a bit, but not by a ton. I'm going to put her at the bottom of B tier. Uh, yeah, I think that's, I think that's fair. Um, Neck Rose is, in my opinion, very overrated. Um, you can't always charge a shot. And if you don't charge a shot with Necros, you die. Like sometimes you just don't have time to, and when you go to charge a shot, you just die. Maybe that's just a skill issue with me, but to me, I prefer the automatic roses. But I know she's better than Reg. She's better than both of these. So I'm going to put her... I would rather fight at mid-range a Necros. Yeah, I think this is a good place for her. Uh, how far are we? We're doing okay. Archaeologist... Not the worst scientist, even though I think that's what you've been told. Um, probably the second or third worst. Scientists, I don't think, can be any lower than B tier. Because they can heal. And they still do very... Even the worst scientists still do very good damage. 
Um, so I'm going to put Archaeologist, mm, we'll put him below Popscorn. I'd rather fight an uh, Archaeologist than a Popscorn. And I'm going to move Druid Rose down to here. Yeah. Camus is the worst uh, scientist. And it's not even close to me. Um, Camus can only hit close range, very close range, but is also a crowd control character. So you're supposed to fight multiple enemies up close with Chemist? That's weird. That's weird. I made a video on Chemist. I'll link it in the description if I remember, but I, I go way in depth on why I think Chemist is the worst scientist. And Zoologist is down here as well, but Zoologist is better than Chemist because he has a higher DPS by quite a bit, if I'm not mistaken. Um, mm, let's see here. Zoologist hits 77 and Chemist hits 55. So 22 extra damage per second. And when you're an only close range character, you need that damage per second. So Zoologist is going to go like above, we'll do above Electric Citron. Yeah, I think that's fair. You have to be super close range with Zoologist. Um, so that kind of limits him. But Greg Scientist is A tier, I think. 70 per shot. That's really good. You can two shot every character with the damage upgrade that has 125 health or less. And can still shoot at far range. Um, his bullets are easy to hit far, far range, but they're not particularly good. But he has that option. Um, so he's probably here. And Marine Biologist is a bit better. I'm going to put him... And we'll do... Here, and I'm going to move Citron down down a bit like right there marine biologist it's just a better reg scientist it's just the reloads a bit longer but that's not a big deal astronaut is up here astronaut is actually just not a fair character um he's bet he's the best scientist in every scenario the best range scientist the best close range scientist he just he's too good in every situation there is no situation where another scientist is better at anything except crowd control but why are you why are you trying to do crowd control as a scientist and if you're trying to do crowd control as a scientist chemist isn't even the best at it physicist is the best crowd control scientist in my opinion and he's still not good because that's his gimmick you can't be a crowd control scientist it just doesn't work as the class you only have 100 health I'm starting to lose my voice because i've been talking so long so if Physicist is kind of on the same boat as Archaeologist, in my opinion, but he, Physicist is probably my favorite scientist. Um, Archaeologist. No, you're not Archaeologist. You're Paleontologist. Paleontologist is the ranged scientist, which is funny because I thought it was supposed to be Astronaut. Um, his fire damage is very reliable. He has a huge magazine size, a lot of room for error. He's decent up close, very good at range. I'm going to put him... I'm going to put him with Zoologist. I think they're pretty close in power level. It's just one is better in every situation, and this is very good in only one situation. So, kind of evens out. Computer Scientist is up here. Um, Sorry, I got distracted. Computer Scientist is up here, but not as good as Astronaut. Computer Scientist doesn't rely on the Legendary Mode, but it's very good, like, unbelievably good. He's very good um, up close, but the range really limits him. Debatably, he's even here, uh, around here somewhere. Um, but I do think his Legendary Meter does push him over the edge, even though he does have the range weakness. But he still can shoot long range, so it's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. Once we have more people, want more characters in S plus tier, he'll be at the bottom. And Dr. Toxic. Him, these three are very interchangeable to me. They're, they're just meh. They're just meh. Meh. Meh characters. Moving on to Soldier. Uh, sorry, I didn't explain, I didn't explain Dr. Toxic. Dr. Toxic has the lowest clip size of any scientist and does the lowest damage per sign out of any scientist besides chemist at 80 dps um actually that's not the lowest but it definitely feels like the lowest uh yeah 
His clip size really limits him, and he doesn't even, if I'm remembering correctly, he doesn't have the Toxic Aura, which, as a close range character who does not rely on stealth like Chomper, you want the Toxic Aura. So, he's not even good at the one thing he was supposed to be good at. Soldiers. This is where I felt in my last tier list, I didn't do a good job of explaining why I put soldiers where they are. So I'm gonna try and fix that. Camo Ranger. Uh, very good. He has the same kind of problem as uh, Astronaut, where he's good at everything. He is very good at range, very good at close range, except he's not very, very good at close range. He's just good at close range. I do think Camo Ranger is a dangerous character. He is probably up here somewhere. I'm gonna say he's better than the these two, but not better than Reg Citron. Centurion. Um, I don't think Centurion is the worst uh, soldier. I think that's Sky Trooper. I'm going to explain why. Give me a minute. Centurion. He's probably on the same level as like Bandit Cactus. No, he's definitely higher than Bandit Cactus. He has the good abilities. Ice Citron. I'd say he's the same on the same level as Ice Citron. He's just a worse Camo Ranger. There's no reason you'd play Camo. There's no reason you'd play Centurion or Camo Ranger. And I've been recording for an hour. Jeez. Um, Super Commando. With no reload upgrades. He's down here. With reload upgrades, he is a beast. I said I was gonna take upgrades into account. And that is the only reason he is up here. I think he is the best soldier besides one. And Super Commando is going right here. No, he's going here. The other, the better soldier is f normal foot soldier. These two are very interchangeable. Do you like range, more range or do you like more versatility? Normal foot soldier is good in every situation. Super Commando is also good in every situation. But he's a little worse at close range and a little better at range, so it depends on what you prefer. I know normal foot soldiers better, but I prefer super commando, so I'm gonna do this. Arctic Trooper. Um, this character is a 1v1 master. He freezes very quickly, and then you can just ZPG everybody. That's why when there's a uh, torch on the other side, everybody switches to Arctic Trooper because it's it's insane. Uh, it's like Goalie Stars, uh, Freeze, and then Imp Punt, but not as good in my opinion. They have, Arctic Trooper has not great DPS, but he only has one ability that synergizes with his Freeze, while Goalie Star has two. So I'm going to put Arctic Trooper above Baseball Star, but not better than Scallywag. General Supremo. I really like General Supremo. I think he does what uh, he does what Sky Trooper tries to do, but better. He does the fire rate gimmick while also having an endless clip. The only downside to General Supremo is he doesn't have the best damage. He has good damage, and he can't bunny hop. Depending on who you are, this might not be a downside, but for me, I'm a bunny hopping bitch. <laughs> I love bunny hopping. So General Supremo. Honestly, is one of my favorite foot soldiers just because of his fire rate, which is higher than Sky Troopers by quite a bit. Um, General Supremo to me is better than Centurion. Um, he's probably around. I'd rather fight. I'd rather fight a Necros. Or I'd rather fight a General Supremo than a Necros. And yeah, I think this is a good spot for him. Um, people also think this guy's the worst uh, soldier. I'm on the boat of he's bad. I don't think he's good. None of the Cloud characters are good. But he's definitely not bad. He's a soldier. No soldiers are bad. But he's not great. Um, I'd probably put him one below Centurion. Uh, he's probably one of the easier to kill foot soldiers because he doesn't- he just doesn't have much DPS. Let me look at the page. Um, Park Ranger has 61 DPS, which is the same as Arctic Trooper. But Arctic Trooper freezes. So it's like you're playing Arctic Trooper without the freeze. So it's just, <laughs> why would you? 
Why would you? Uh, Scuba Soldier. Scuba Soldier is just a better tank commander in my opinion. In my eyes, there's no reason to play tank commander when you can play uh, Scuba Soldier. Uh, he has two shots instead of one, but each shot does a little bit less damage, but it, it's just better than tank commander. You got to try both characters and see what I mean. He's less reliant on the reload upgrade than tank commander. Tank commander, you need the reload upgrade. I think Scuba Soldier is like up here with uh, uh, Camo Ranger. Scuba Soldier is good at everything. Tank Commander, eh, he's meh, he's eh, I'd say he's top of B tier, he's like, he's decent, he can definitely get stuff done, he's a strong character in the right hands, but you have to be very good at Tank Commander, he has a very high skill ceiling, if you master him, he's up here somewhere, um, so I'll probably put him at the bottom of A tier, no, I'll put him next to Arctic Trooper, I'd rather face, uh, or, I'd rather face a baseball star than a tank commander. And Sky Trooper. Let me explain why I think Sky Trooper is the worst soldier. This is not a popular opinion, I know, so let me try and explain. People pointed out on my last tier list that Sky Trooper has higher DPS than Foot Soldier, than Reg Foot Soldier. This is true, but only at the closest range you can possibly be at. If you step five feet back, Normal Foot Soldier hits better damage. So unless you are barrel stuffing with Sky Trooper, you're doing less damage than Reg Soldier. And Sky Trooper's accuracy is awful. Like, and his fall, his damage fall off is horrendous. So you have awful spread and terrible fall off damage for a character that's supposed to be ranged. Like, you're supposed to, how Foot Soldier was intended to be played was to sit on roofs and fire at a distance. And Sky Trooper can't do that. Like, he's he's garbage at it. So you can only play him as an extremely close-ranged uh, soldier. But why would you do that when you can just play regular soldier and be more versatile? Hell, Super Commando. I'd rather play a close-range soldier like Tank Commander or Scuba Soldier than Sky Trooper. Sky Trooper just doesn't do anything to help him. I think he's like worse than these two, but not by much. I think he's like down here. I'm just, I'm not a fan. Uh, I think his gimmick is just General Supremo, but worse. He tries to have the highest fire rate. It says in his description he has the highest fire rate, but he doesn't have the highest fire rate. He doesn't have a high DPS outside of like ramming your barrel into the plant's mouth. He's just pointless. He doesn't need to exist. If I could remove any character from the game, or if I think you could remove any character from the game and have the least blip besides like the spray chompers, it's it's Sky Trooper. I just don't I don't like the character, <laughs> as you can tell. Sunflowers, um, sunflowers. I have mixed opinions on. Um, you'll you'll see what I mean. Alien flower, um, definitely the worst sunflower. Um, not bad. I don't think any of the sunflowers are bad. But she can't really defend herself very well. And every other sunflower can defend themselves very well. So I'm going to put alien flower above. Mm, we'll do above electrician. I think that's fair. Reg sunflower. Um, very reliable. I'm going to put her beside necros. I think this is a fair place for her. Um, sun pharaoh. I don't know what to do with Sun Pharaoh. She's a burst character, slow projectile speed. I don't like Sun Pharaoh. She's my least favorite Sunflower. Um, so it's hard to place her. I know she's strong, but I don't like her. <laughs> I'm gonna put her below Reg Sunflower, and we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Electric Sunflower. It's Reg Sunflower. Hits a le bit less damage, but is good on turf, and very good in ops. Very good in ops. I'm gonna put electric flower down here. I think this is a good place for her. Right above Party Rose. Fire flower, I think is better than electric flower, but worse than Sun Pharaoh. So I'm gonna put her. I'm gonna put her right here. I think that's a good place. Metal petal. I think metal petal is the second best sunflower behind Mystic Flower, who I think is S tier. 
with her charge shots. She's insane. Uh, I think she's better than Iron Citron. She has the highest DPS out of any Sunflower. When you take into her, uh, when you don't take into her account her charge shot, she has the highest DPS out of a Sunflower. She's just semi-automatic. And with the charge shots, you can one-shot imps. You can do like I think it's like 80 damage for the third charge shot. That is such a big deal. You're a support character that can hit this damage. That's insane. That's insane. She is what Iron Citron wants to be with the charge shots. And Metal Petal, I think, is right here. I think Metal Petal is scary. Now, she doesn't have the best DPS. Metal Petal has, let's see here, 47 DPS, which is tied with Power Flower. Oh, yeah, which is tied with Power Flower for the lowest DPS. But she has 150 health. Which usually I think is a terrible, terrible upside. Armor Chomper and Jade Cactus are, and Rock Pea are terrible characters because they give up mobility for health. But the thing about Sunflower is she can heal herself. She has this little pot plant that she can dance around. And the higher your health, the longer you can stay in a fight. Which means your DPS doesn't matter as much. So 25 health might not seem like a lot. But when you're dancing around your pot plant and god forbid you have another metal pedal hooked up to you she is an unkillable beast if you play her right if you play her like any other sunflower you're not going to get far but you play her right you either play her with another sunflower or use your pot plant correctly oh she is so dangerous i i genuinely think she's the most underrated character in this game people think she's the worst sunflower i don't think so me personally um not bad DPS for a Sunflower. 47 isn't the worst. Same DPS as Camo Ranger, just a two, two damage per second less than Camo Ranger at long range. Not bad. Not, definitely not bad. And she has the tankiness. Very tanky. Stuffy Flower, um, I think she is one below Metal Petal. She is the highest damaging automatic Sunflower. So if you want to play an automatic Sunflower and don't like Metal Petal, Stuffy Flower is your best bet. She hits the highest damage. That's, that's why she's this high. Her gimmick of dropping Sun Drops when you kill a zombie doesn't matter. I have I think I've gotten value out of it like once, and that was because I fought people back to back. But it's not good for really anything. You can heal yourself, so it doesn't do much. And for teammates, eh. Usually when you kill people, they're on like an objective. Sunflowers aren't really just going to be going around killing people um, very often. Or her gimmick isn't very good, but just her, her primary is amazing. Shadow Flower is weird. Shadow Flower is regular Sunflower, but does 8% more damage. That's it. Um, I guess she's one above <laughs> Reg Sunflower. Um, I'll put her above Necros. She has a higher fire rate, so her mag runs out faster, and her reloads longer. But she does 8% more damage than Reg Sunflower. Congratulations, I guess. Vampire Flower. Some people think she's the worst Sunflower. Some people think she's the best Sunflower. I think she is not good. Her lifesteal is not good enough to justify her low health. With the health upgrade, she's not too bad. She's better than Alien, but I would rather fight a Metal Petal. Not a Metal Petal. A Vampire Flower than a Old Drake. Super Brains. I love Super Brains. One of my favorite classes. Breakfast Brains is my second favorite character in the game. And he is beaten. He's not great. Um, he can't jump while, sh while punching, which is a big deal. It is a big deal. Um, his punches... I think he has the lowest DPS besides Cosmic Brains. Let me double check this. Breakfast Brains. Punches. 59. Yeah. So actually, Breakfast Brains at max windup hits 59, which is the same as regular Super Brains. This is Bean. <laughs> um, so Breakfast Brains hits 60 damage per second um, at full windup. You do have to wind up your punches. He starts punching slowly, and then he slowly gets faster. I don't know what I just did. Um, and once you're at full, full windup, Things die very quickly. 60 damage per second. You kill 
uh, pea shooter in two seconds. Like that's that's really good. Um, but the wind up definitely gives enemies time to escape, gives them time to fight back. Um, it's definitely a weakness. He is the fastest moving zombie. Just walking speed. Hide with Moto X Star. Um, which is very good for a mobility based character. So he also has that going for him. I would put him uh, probably below the goat. I would, re yeah, I think that's a good place for him. Because the rest of the super brains are around the same level. Cosmic brains, again, this is a character. Some people think he's the worst character in the game. Some people think he's the best. I think he's mid. I think he's worse than Breakfast Brains. I do think he's the worst Super Brains. Um, I he can be on the same level as Breakfast Brains in my opinion, but you you do a charge shot and you punch somebody, and if they don't die from it, you're dead. You have to kill them with that charge shot, or you're doing not very good DPS. You have the lowest DPS out of any Super Brains at 42. Uh, so, yeah. You have to kill somebody with the charge shot, or you're just, you're dead. Um, I'd rather, f I think all these characters are better than Cosmic Brains. I th I'd, I'll put them above Electric Flower. Regular Super Brains, though, uh, is A tier. Uh, I'd put Reg Super Brains uh, below Golf Star. I think that's a very good place. Um, but I'll move Egg and Future Cactus down. Yeah, I think that's, I think this is good. This is good. This is good. Electric brains. Um, I don't know what to say about electric brains. He has very low DPS. He has an electric arc, but it's not very strong. You don't want to be taking multiple enemies at a time as a close range character, so the electric damage doesn't really matter. His beam is the best beam out of all the super brains. If you, instead of punching, just use your beam, you're going to be doing much better than punching. So very, you should really shouldn't be punching as electric range. You should use him as a close range beam character. So you're basically playing Citron as electric brains, but a worse version of Citron. So he's probably around here somewhere. I'm going to put him above Sun Pharaoh. Yeah, I think that's good. Party brains is just super brains, but better. I think he's in S tier. Um, I do think he's better than these characters, but not Mystic Flower. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's fair. I'm gonna move Tennis Star down a bit. I'm gonna go through and move everybody around. Toxic Brains. I just did a video on Toxic Brains, um, and to sum it up, because I've already talked quite in depth about this character. Outside of his legendary mode, he is the worst Super Brains. Besides Cosmic, in my opinion, he has pitiful DPS at 48, which is too higher than Electric Brains. So re without his Legendary Meter, he's worse than Electric Brains, in my opinion, because Electric Brains at least has his beam. Toxic Brains doesn't have a, a very good beam. It's it's just not, not great. Um, but his Legendary Meter, you get it by punching plants instead of killing them, which is amazing. Um, he's... S tier in ops, 100%. He is up here. In PvP, you need the legendary meter upgrade. If you have the legendary meter upgrade, he's probably top of A tier, bottom of S. If you don't have the uh, legendary meter upgrade, he's probably bottom of A. I, I, I don't think Toxic Brains is as good as people say. And if you go and play without his legendary meter upgrade, you'll you'll see what I mean um, with his legendary meter upgrade I do think he is I think he is pretty much on par with party brains they're very similar I think party brains is better do I think tennis star is better no um but yeah I'll put tennis star at the bottom he just yeah. um they're very interchangeable in my opinion party brains is better but toxic brains is easier so it's kind of like EP and Law P. It's that kind of dynamic. Um, Torchwood. Torchwood is my favorite plant. Ugh. So I'll try not to be biased. I do think he's up here, but he gets bundled very hard. His abilities are literally the strongest abilities in the game. There is no stronger ability combo than his. He's very slow, though. He's like a mech. He's like you're always playing a mech. 
So he has the same weaknesses as a mech. Getting grouped up on. Slow mobility, except for... Um... Yeah, he can't jump while firing, which is... Which is something. Um, I do think he is very strong. Especially if you get two or three Torchwoods on a plant team, the zombies are forced to go Arctic Trooper or they lose. Like, it's it's that strong. And there isn't really another character that you can do that with besides everybody above Torchwood. Which I think Torchwood is here. If you have an enemy team full of any of these, you lose. There's nothing you can do. And we're at the last character. Chomp Thing. I think Chomp Thing is the worst character in the game. Now I'm going to try and explain this. The, again, this, this is unscripted, so this is just going off the top of my head. I'm going to try and explain best I can why I think Chomp Thing is the worst character in the game. I made a video about this a long time ago. I'll also link it in the description if I remember. Chomp Thing has the worst spray tied with electric. Chomp Thing's gimmick is he has way less health than a normal Chomper. He has 135 health, if I'm remembering correctly. But his gimmick is that he regenerates his health unbelievably fast. Usually, I think characters, you have to wait 5 seconds in between taking damage to start regaining health. Chomp Thing is 1 second, so you can be in the middle of a fight and start regenerating health. And the health regen upgrade lowers this to half a second. Um... So, what does this mean? Well, this means that at best in the middle of a fight, assuming you're fighting like an engineer where you can heal in between his shots, you're going to heal like 10 health. So I'm going to say, and this is generous, I'm going to say your effective health is 145, which is the same as Count Chompula, but Count Chompula they're 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 very similar like okay this is this is how i put it chomp thing's gimmick is a after you win a fight you can get into a fight sooner because you can get your health back sooner but winning the fight in the first place is harder because you deal the least amount of damage out of any spray chomper you have the least amount of health out of any chomper and you don't have any mobility you move the same speed as the rest of the chompers so you don't have the health, you don't have the speed, you don't have the damage, what do you have? You have nothing. And you could, people have used the argument that you can burrow mid-fight and get out of, and start regening while you're fighting a zombie. Well, let's go through the zombies that can burrow cancel you. Let's start with Imp. Imp can nade you. You're out of burrow. Scientists can throw bombs at you and blow you up. While the second you start the, the burrow animation, scientists can throw their sticky bombs at you and they will blow up before you get into the ground, making you a very easy kill. Soldiers, they can't burrow cancel you, so you got that. But burrowing does make it a lot easier for them to ZPG you, which is that's something you need to take into consideration. Um, if you burrow... Uh, pirates have barrel, they have the cannon, um, technically they can burrow cancel you, but it's very hard to do. And engineers can very easily burrow cancel you, so that's three, I think we're at, three? Super brains can kick you out of, uh, can kick you out of your burrow. All stars can tackle you out of your burrow. Let's see here. Goat, we're not counting goat. Uh... Yeah, so out of the eight classes in Garden Warfare 2, five of them can burrow cancel you. So is that really a reliable strategy if more than half of the character roster can cancel it? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, and it's just not that great. If you are losing a fight and you burrow, your enemy is either going to leave, so you lost the fight, or you, you, it's a draw, where you sit there and regen your health, and the zombie will just wait for you to come up. While you burrow, I think the highest amount of health you can regen is 70, and that is if you sit there the whole time, and the zombie sits there watching the whole time. And that's not moving. You can't move. 
At that point, just play another Chomper. Because you'll be doing more damage as any other Chomper. You'll have more health, so you can just win the fight in the first place easier. Chomp Thing's gimmick is useless if you can't win the fight in the first place. That's that's the thing I'm trying to get. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay. So I'm gonna move these around. And we'll see. Quite honestly, I th I think this is pretty close to, to what I would say is. I'd move Mob Cop up. I think I put him down a bit too far. Um, probably here. Other than that, I think all these characters are pretty fairly placed. I have my controver controversial opinions like Metal Pedal and, you know, all that. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's good. This is my... I'm going to move these two up. Actually, these... There. This is my Garden Warfare 2 updated tier list. Um, this whole thing is going to be unedited so you can... Uh, hear my thoughts and hear my awful stuttering and all that. Um, if you disagree with anything, feel free to leave a comment. If you agree with me, let me know. Um, I just needed to get... This is a low effort video, obviously. I, I barely have to edit it. I just have to put my face in the corner. Uh, there is a better Garden Warfare 2 video coming up. Uh, if you watched the entire thing, which, uh, I doubt anybody did, uh, or if you skip to the end, the next Garden Warfare 2 video should be getting every achievement in Garden Warfare 2. Every single one. Including the impossible. So, uh, big things coming. I'm very excited. And I'm also working on a huge Deep Rock Galactic, uh, uh, project on my Twitch. And that's in the description. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, and yeah. That's about it. I will see you when I see you.